Hi, I'm Teresa the Traveler, and today I'm in Nairobi, Kenya. I rented a taxi and he took me down to the Nairobi National Park. I'm going on my own private safari. And this is my driver, John. We have some guinea fowls right here, hanging out by the side of the road. These are Ellen's. They are from the antelope family. Over here, we have a group of impala. This impala over here has some birds hitchhiking on his back. We have some ducks over here, just drinking out of a crocodile-filled pond. Here we have a buffalo grazing. We're really close to him. Oh, this guy's got birds all over his face. Right here we've got some impalas, a little grazing. Here we have a group of crown cranes. Looks like a family. This one is a gazelle. You can tell because he's got a stripe on his side. It is illegal to kill elephants in Kenya, and it is also illegal to be in possession of any ivory, any elephant-made item, period. We've had our first rhino sighting. Oh, yeah, you can see his horn there. Guy at the bush. A little bit. Come on out a bit more, buddy, so we can see your horn. There it is. Rhinos have become an endangered species because mm. people kill them for their horns and ship them off, especially to Chinese markets. So over here we have a mother and baby rhino. Over here, we got a couple monkeys. Oh, that's so cute. They're grooming each other. Over here, we have an ostrich crossing the road. We have a nice giraffe right here, just having a bite to eat. We have a giraffe about to cross the road by the looks of things. He's walking right up to us. That is pretty cool. <laughs> Just coming to say hi. Hi giraffe. Come. <laughs> Here, giraffe, giraffe. <laughs> Ahead of us, we've got a bunch of zebras in the middle of the road. Getting a really good scratch in there. <laughs> oh, there's lots of zebras here over by the water. And over here, we've got oh, five of them. Looks like they're coming down for a drink. Crocodile's moving. What's he gonna do? Oh, let's move it again.
So this is the site where they burnt a whole bunch of ivory. We have a sign here and it says, in a period spanning only 20 years, poachers, gangs traversed Kenya's rangelands and forests, slaughtering rhino and elephant almost to the brink of extinction. Elephant numbers would decline from a high of 130,000 in 1973 to 16,000 in 1989. An insatiable demand for ivory fueled the slaughter, with a kilo going for as much as 13 US dollars. In 1989, poachers were killing an estimated 1,000 elephants a month. It was time to put their foot down. The Wildlife Department's ammunition store at the time was full with 2,000 tusks meant for sale, with bids stretching up to 3.2 US million dollars. And that's when Dr. Richard Leakey, KWS director, suggested that it all be torched in symbolic outrage at the international trade in ivory. Then there was the question, would the ivory burn? It was made up of hard dentine and enamel. And more significantly, would the government of Kenya agree to the burning? Luckily, the idea received the support of the president, Moy, and it turned out that the ivory would burn fiercely if doused in petroleum. So on the morning of the 18th of July, 1989, Kenyan's head of state led his country in making a statement of global concern that Kenya would no longer allow the slaughter of its elephants to satisfy market demand for ivory. On this very spot, he faced a pile of ivory worth an estimated 1 million US dollars and lit a bonfire that was broadcast by television stations across the world. Here's a picture of when it was burning, and that's all that's left of it now. This monument commemorates the burning of 12 tons of ivory by the president on July 18, 1989. Here's a close-up of the pile of ash. You're not allowed to take any pieces home because this is a monument all those poor animals that were killed. And that concludes our tour of the park.